Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 60th episode on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as well as the final episode of Season 1, titled An Oyster Stew. We begin this episode at the Youth Center where Zack is spotting Tommy and he's being distracted by Angela. Oh, and Bulk and Skull are practicing for an audition of some sort. Kim walks over and Zack says that he wants to do something great for Angela's birthday. He wants to get her a pair of pearl earrings and Kim suggests a singing telegram instead and Zack says, yeah, singing telegram at the restaurant right before I give her the pearl earrings. This is sounding sexual. On the moon, Goldar suggests that Rita calls on the Echo Side Pearl and the Oysterizer to kill Zack. Okay. At school, Zack approaches Angela at her locker and Zack asks Angela out for a date on her birthday and she agrees after some begging from Zack. And Zack realizes he needs to find some damn pearl earrings. Cut to Rita looking at a glass ball where she's talking to the oysterizer somehow and he says he'll give her the pearls of stillness to give Zack to give to Angela. Man. Zack leaves a jewelry store that must have cost an extra $10 to shoot at for that day, bummed that pearls are expensive. He walks home through the park when a shady man in a big coat solicits Zack by opening his jacket and showing off a pair of pearl earrings that he has. He gives them to Zack for minimal cash because it's his love charm that he gave to his deceased wife. At least Zack asks if they're stolen first before he gets them, which is kinda nice. But then, the man walks away and becomes a putty. This episode's freaking weird. At the French restaurant, Tommy, Zack, Angela, and Kim walk in, and Zack and Tommy are confused as to why the entire menu is in French. Then, Zack orders food from the stereotypical French waiter. Billy, Trini, and Jason are walking through the park, and they're targeted by putties to the tune of a song that I genuinely don't know for Ron Wasserman. In the command center, Alpha and Zordon find out about the pearls of stillness being in Zack's possession, and Zordon says how they'll freeze everything and everyone in the vicinity if Zack gives those to Angela. At the cafe, Zack ordered horrible food for the group, and Zordon tells Jason, Billy, and Trini about the pearls, and the three teleport away. Angela's singing telegram shows up and it's Bulk and Skull because I guess their singing telegram audition went well. They embarrass Zack who gives Angela the earrings and Angela is taken aback by the pearls and she almost kisses Zack when a cake comes flying onto the table thanks to Bulk and Skull. Zack and Tommy leave to go clean up and Kim tells Angela to try on the earrings and as she does, Jason, Billy, and Trini show up and everyone freezes. Well, Zack and Tommy come back to find everyone frozen, and they're confused about this, as Tommy checks their vital signs, which is a nice touch. Then the two just teleport to the command center in front of everyone. Zoran catches them up on everything, and he warns that they need to defeat the Oysterizer to free them, but he may try to lure them underwater with him. It's Morphin time! Zack and Tommy split up, and the Oysterizer comes out and attacks Zack, spraying goo onto Zack. And Zack says, man, acid gel, Zordon didn't say anything about this. Yep, he sure didn't. Then Tommy comes flying in and saves the day, and Zack tells him that he's hurt, so Tommy transfers his shield over to Zack, which is awesome. Then, Tommy gets hit by the goop, and Zack says that he'll take care of the monster, punching the Oysterizer back into the water. Apparently that was all that was needed to break the spell. Everyone unfreezes, and Angela's earrings disintegrate in a cup of water, and Zack shows up. Kim asks where Tommy is, and Zack says he's okay, I just left him at the beach. I mean, the last time we saw Tommy, he was screaming screaming and writhing in pain from the acid gel, but no, yeah, thanks Zack, he's like definitely a-okay. Zack lets them know that they have to go underwater with the Megazord to fight the Oysterizer, and the group run off to have a badass shot where it's morphin' time. After the five morph, somehow, the next scene is them in the Megazord. I mean, I'm not complaining about brevity. They find the Echo Side Pearl by firing at it, and that pisses the Oysterizer off, who then starts to fight them and gets the upper hand. Jason brings up how the Dragon Zord is meant to work underwater, and they need Tommy, who is on the beach and has his shield morphed again. He gets the Dragon Zord to come to their aid. feel like we should have started there. Dragon Zord hits Oysterizer out of the water somehow, and it's pretty damn funny. Oysterizer ties up Dragon Zord with a ball and chain weapon before he sprays more acid gel onto it, then fires at it with a laser, causing it to fall down. The Megazord shows up and somehow frees Megazord from the acid gel. They call it the Power Sword and destroy the Oysterizer. R.I.P. You barely did 
anything. At the youth center, Jason, Billy, Kim, and Tommy talk about their fight, and Zach and Trini are standing by with flowers. And Zach says that you can't buy love, and Trini says that that's a good lesson to learn, and wishes him good luck. Hulk and Skull show up and agree to no singing this time, and they approach Angela. And Zach sings about how sorry he is, and Angela apologizes for being a materialistic bitch, and they kiss. The end of season one. This episode is obviously not the intended season finale, but it's decent. We got to see Zack use the dragon shield, and we got to see the Megazord fight underwater, and finally, finally, we got to see Zack and Angela get together. It's a shame this is literally the last time that we'll ever see her. Other than that, it's nothing too terribly special, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Next time, we'll be doing an overarching review of the entire first season before we dive into season two. But until then, may the power protect you.